the day you bring sin into it, everything fold up. Before you start binding the demons of dryness, check what you did to mop out holiness. Check what you did to remove the grace of God from your life. There was a, somebody that I, I told you it was here in Kenya. I heard the word dryness for the first time. And somebody that always okay, every time dryness, I should pray dryness. Later, we now discover these people are just criminals. How can't you be dry? The anointing I carry does not prosper criminals. No, 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 it does not. That's why when one house of rep member in Nigeria called me and said, want me to pray for him for the next election, I said, sorry, I'm not. He said, I give churches 20,000. I said, I'm not for sale. Because what I carry does not prosper the wicked. If I pray for you, you will lose the election. In fact, if I pray for you, the supporters you have will leave you. So he said, let me leave you. You go and use your wickedness and get where you are going. I am anointed to prosper the righteous. That's why I am sent to the body of Christ. Are you understanding me? The righteous are not being ministered to. We have bishops and lying prophets ministering to the wicked, ministering to those who are going to hell and the spirit of hell is prospering them with the prosperity of Cain. I am one of the few on the face of the earth. Our assignment is to look at the righteous, minister to them, get them healed, get them free from poverty and lack. Are you understanding? That's our assignment. So for the righteous to prosper, but they must understand the principle that covers the anointing that God has given us. It's righteousness, sir. So if you want to enjoy the prosperity of the righteous, you are welcome to the crowd of the spirit. But if you come here, you want to follow that of the wicked, everything will dry up. Because God does not prosper the sinful. He cleans the sinful before he can prosper them. He cleans them up before he can prosper them. Are you understanding me? So he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water which is the presence of the Holy Spirit and whatever it does shall prosper so if you look at this person he has been purged completely are you understanding me one of the major things that drove Christianity in the early days is that purging is a desire to be purged by God you see us in those days we cry we kneel down whenever we are fasting sometimes three days dry fasting you see people even ladies crying purge me Lord Watch me, Lord. Watch me, Lord. Watch me, Lord. Heavenly Father, watch me, Lord. Watch me, Lord. You see them crying. Very beautiful ladies, but they're not looking for who to marry them. They're looking for how their marriage with Jesus will remain intact. How their marriage with Jesus will many times until you meet the real husband, which is Jesus. Anyone you meet is going to be fake. Are you understanding me? So that is what they were looking at. They cry and weep before God to purge them, to search them, to remove everything out of them. You see people declaring three days dry fasting, not to cast out demons, to cast out sin. To cast out sin, to lie on the altar of God, for God to purge them completely because they know the sorrows of sin will remain until they are purged. To remain, let me let me let me show you the three kinds of sorrows that follow us in the Christian faith. Things we must not shake away. Before I go into some other things about purging, do you understand me? Write this down: major sorrows on the Christian journey. The major sorrows on the Christian journey. These are things that. The major sorrow on the Christian journey. These are things that as soon as God puts you on the narrow way that leads to life, they begin to happen. Do you understand me? The first sorrow, you see, this this is the, the reason why we have to look at. I'll show you later, but but this is one of the reasons why you see Christians. It is the presence of this sorrow that makes Christians backslide. Is a presence you see you need to understand these sorrows so that your Christians can your Christianity can be okay. Do you understand me? So, you see, some of you are not even saved. It pains my heart so much. You you call yourself Christian, but you are not saved. You're not living the life of somebody who is saved. How can you be a Christian? How can you be a Christian and you're, and you're not pursuing God? So, what Christian are you? The first sorrow. Is the sorrow of doing the will of God. That's the first sorrow in the Christian journey. The sorrow of doing the will of God. 
the sorrow of doing the will of God. That is the first sorrow. Some of us, we think that Christianity is a club you join. You join the club, you change your title. And you begin to practice some forms of religion and you call yourself a Christian. Christianity without these sorrows that God attached to it will expose you to the sorrows of sin. You have a choice to either pick the sorrows of this journey or you pick the sorrow of sin. One thing in the spirit realm, you either carry the yoke of Jesus or carry the yoke of your enemy, there's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. You either carry the yoke of Jesus on your shoulders or carry the yoke of the curses of your father's house. The yoke of the demons that feed on people. This sorrow of doing the will of God is the reason why many are not even Christians. They are just Christian by title. Because they can't do the will of God. They can't do. It, you see, when we say the will of God, it's not just what the Bible wrote. It's not just what God revealed to you. There are certain things. For Okay, for instance, look at the story of the wedding supper. The Bible says the king sent the servants to invite people. And all of them heard and they gave legitimate excuses. Legitimate. At that point, who is the king? Jesus. Who are the servants? Angels and we preachers. Now, what was the will of God? The will of God was for them to, to forgo whatever they wanted to do and respond to the invitation. Do you understand me? That was the will of God. It was you, those who were going to farm, like one said he bought a donkey. Do not one say he, he did that? The will of God as of that time, he leave your donkey, leave your marriage, leave your legitimacy, and follow the ultimate at that time. That was the will of God. So something you don't understand these things. Do you know that when you are invited to a meeting from heaven, is the will of God for you to attend? If you now go back and say you want to pray, this is the will of God for you to come. You are stupid. You are just being stupid because the will of God has just appeared to you and you turn it down. When I walk with my spiritual father, each time he called me to come and see him, I take it as the will of God. And I shut down my own programs and I move. He can never say come and I give an excuse. I will erase the excuse. I will erase it. I say this one stay. I'm not coming. My father has called. That is the will of God for me at that time. And it has such a relationship with the man saved me from premature death. At least I know one time he saved me. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You say you're a Christian, you can't do the will of God. Look at what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Look at he said, You prophesy in my name. You did miracles in my name. I never knew you know. They, plat, they, they, they practice a form of godliness, but they never did the will of God. Why? Because of the sorrow of doing the will of God. Doing the will of God is not cheap. For instance, in the story of the invitation, the sorrow of foregoing whatever they, they were told to do. There were three different people that gave three different excuses. Do you understand me? Can we go there and read it? Go there, quickly. Matthew 25. Let's see whether it's 25 or 18. Let me check. The story of the wedding supper. Matthew chapter 22 parable of the marriage feast look at look at what he said the kingdom of God is like a certain man verse 2 a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servant to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come again he sent out other servants saying tell those who are invited see I have prepared my dinner my oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all these things are ready come to the wedding but they made light of it do you see it? they made light of it and went their ways. You see, when you make light of a divine invitation, your life will lose value on it. People will make light of spiritual things. They will end up missing in their work with God. That was how Esau made light of, of, of his bad ride and he lost it. Look at what the Bible says. Look at the next one. And they made light of it and went and we went to his own family, whatever, whatever. And I said, This one sees, the other one sees his, his servant. But this one that made light of it, 
they went their own ways number one they followed their own lifestyle doing the will of god will involve crushing your lifestyle crushing your traditions do you understand me for instance it's a tradition where i came from that every december wherever we are in the world we assemble in the village at least to renew relationship in the family not that we have any idol we are serving just come home see your parents I remember one time my mom used to tell me there are certain old people if you don't come now they will just die you will not see them again and of course I miss a lot of them so at the end of the day every year we ought to go and visit and socialize and renew relationships and go back to wherever we are coming from but since I came to this country I have not been able to do it why? I'm doing the will of God the sorrow of not doing it of not going the way I normally go some people have died I don't even the last time I saw them it was many years ago and I'm feeling they are dead I can't move because I am here with a higher voice in heaven stand don't go anywhere you cannot hear from God and begin to follow men there is sorrow in doing the will of God is that sorrow that make men not to do it but, so that's why look at this one he said when is one way he said one to his own farm say home farm and another to his business. So these are the three excuses they gave. What is the sorrow of doing the will of God? The ability not to go to your farm. Do you understand? Instead of going to your farm, respond to the invitation. Let the farm stay there. Instead of going to your business, respond to the invitation. Let the business stay there. Do you understand me? That is the sorrow. So anything you lose, anything you go through for saying yes to Jesus is the sorrow of doing divine will. So that is part of the sorrow that must follow us. That is the meaning of carry your cross. Let me show you something in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. How the sorrow of doing the will of God, what it cost in the life of these people. Hebrew 11. If we are going to the same heaven with these people, then we must serve God the way they served him. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hebrews 11, verse 32. He said, And what more shall I say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdue kingdoms, walked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire escape the age of this world out of weakness were made strong became valiant in battle turned to flight the armies of the aliens hmm. women received their dead rest to life again others were tortured you see the sorrow others were tortured not accepting deliverance it like somebody say Oh, you will keep living on the street or you come and sleep with me let me give you a house you say no I refuse to accept the deliverance of living on the street do you understand me somebody looking at oh you will suffer you will remain jobless until you die come and sleep with me I will give you a job or come and compromise or join our church or you see anybody who asks you to join a church to get a job is crazy and say if the church is good do you understand me now now the deliverance from what from the sorrow of doing the will of God is what you should reject whenever the devil wants to deliver you from the pain of doing the will of God tell him no I don't want Satan does not conduct deliverance actually the only deliverance is conduct is any deliverance that will deliver us from the sorrow of doing God's will he will conduct it very well so that you just go to hell with him because Jesus said in the book of Matthew the prophesy in his name they did miracle in his name but he knew them not why because they practiced lawlessness they did their own will because they never loved the sorrow of doing god's will i remember many years ago some preachers who heard me preaching about how not to turn the church into a many money making machine i wrote a publication very bold titled robber pastors church is not a money making machine they spread it everywhere and they called me they say you will remember poor. look at you look at where you are living you are just preaching this thing whatever I went through for holding the true word was a sorrow of doing the will of God sometimes not having clothes to wear is sorrow of doing the will of God 
not having food to eat is sorrow of doing the will of God if you misinterpret it and receive deliverance from that sorrow you are gone look at what the Bible says the next word it said others were tortured not accepting deliverance why? that they might obtain what? a better resurrection may this become your vision to obtain a better because there are two kinds of resurrection there are those that will resurrect into the lake of fire but we were going to resurrect into the I mean into heaven we will sit with the king of kings and the lord of lords on the golden table will be served by angels we will remain with him, with him that way forever and ever and this people now say instead of me to resurrect do that one that I will be in hell just by submitting to a temporary pressure let me suffer for life and make sure I be with Jesus when I die are you understanding me that